Hey there, it's Dr. Scott Watson with another Finale tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you four different ways to enter chord symbols into a lead sheet. Let's get started. As you can see, I've set up a lead sheet with no chord symbols, and we're going to choose the chord tool from the main tool palette. When we do, you'll see these triangles that appear uh, along the left side. Those show you the vertical position of the chords, the chord symbols, if you want a little higher or a little lower. Uh, we'll wait to adjust those until after we've put some chords in. From the chord menu for our first way, we're going to choose manual input. And our first way is just to type the chords into the score. So if you either click on the staff or if you click above the staff, it doesn't matter. You'll get a blinking cursor. And our first chord is an F major chord. I'll just type a capital F, hit the space bar to advance to uh, twice to beat three. And now the next chord is going to be G minor seven but with a slash F, meaning an F is the bass note. So GM7 is the conventional way to express G minor 7, and then the slash F just tells the bass player to play an F. Hit the space bar again, and now we're um, into the next measure, and we want the same thing there, F, and then G minor 7 slash F. So typing in the score um, is a very intuitive, um, just type the, the chord symbols you think it would be. Here's an F. Um, this next one's an A minor. So what do you think an A minor would be? It's a capital A for the, the root of the chord and then lowercase m, right? A minor. It's, these are all very traditional things. Now this next chord is a B flat major chord. So to get the flat, I type, you know, B and then lowercase b will turn into a flat. Watch that lowercase b when I hit the space bar. Boom, it turns into a flat. All right, and then once more, here's an A minor chord, capital A-M. All right, so our first line of uh, this, this lead sheet, I used typing into the score or manual input, and it's all very intuitive, so that's our first way. Okay, continuing into the second line of the lead sheet, we're going to do um, creating our own chord symbols. Um, for this first uh, chord, I want a G, minor 7, but I'm going to do M-I-N for minor and 7. And when I hit the space bar, it doesn't recognize it, right? So it says, oh wait, I'm, I'm looking for lowercase m7, but you did M-I-N 7. So, which also, by the way, is another way of saying G minor 7. So if you want to add that to the chord suffix library, if you want to create your own symbol, right, one you type and that Finale doesn't have already, you say yes. And then each character, the M, the I, the N, you can review and say, is that exactly where I want it? So for instance, say the seven, you want a little bit higher up. You want it to be sort of up like that, right? You can, you can place everything the way you want it and then say, okay. And now that becomes part of Finale's chord suffix library. Let me click over here for the F. Um, this next chord is going to be an A7 chord, an A dominant seven, so capital A7. Finale does recognize that, so I'm still just typing into the score, but let's try a D minor. Instead of doing D lowercase m, which I know Finale would recognize, let's do D M I N, right? Another way of saying D minor. And again, Finale says, oh, I don't recognize that. Do you want to add it? Sure, let's add it. Let's approve the M, the I, the N, and just go um, and add it to the, the chord suffix library. Uh, the last chord for this line is going to be a D flat, so I could either use the space bar or just click where I want it. D flat, the lowercase b, turns into a flat. Okay, so now we've shown you a way to create your own chord suffix, that is to just type in what you want. If Finale doesn't already have it in its library, then you can edit it, create it, and then save it into the chord suffix library. Okay, a third way to enter chords in a lead sheet is to choose the suffix from Finale's chord suffix library. To do that, you have to type colon and zero. And then when you hit the space bar, Finale will open up the chord suffix library and you can choose what you want. So for instance, this chord is going to be an F major seven sharp five chord. Now I could type that in, you know, F major seven and then sharp five, right? And if I hit the space bar, you know, it's there. That's the chord I wanted. But another way to have done that would just be to type F colon zero. Watch what happens when I hit the space bar. It opens up the chord suffix library. Now here's where I would look for that major seven sharp five. That's the chord. And, and again, look at all these wonderful chords there are. There's you know dozens if not hundreds of different chords that you could choose. But the one I wanted is up here, the F major seven sharp five, and I select it and then it adds it. So colon zero gets you into the chord suffix library and from there you can just choose what you want. Let me just show you one more of those. So for instance, down here, 
we want a um, F sharp diminished seven. Um, so I'll, I'll do the F. And by the way, the pound sign will turn into a sharp, right? So just like the lowercase b turns into a flat, I'm going to do F pound sign and then colon zero, hit the space bar. And I'm looking for a diminished seven uh, chord symbol. So let me scroll down past these major and minors to diminished. OK, here we go. Now I could choose the, the zero, the circle uh, diminished, or I could choose this diminished seven. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll choose this one and say select. And then look, the, the pound sign did turn into a sharp. And now I have that chord symbol, the F sharp diminished to seven. All right, and here's one more really cool method of putting chords in a lead sheet. And that is to play them on a MIDI keyboard and have Finale recognize it. To do this in the chord menu, you have to have allow MIDI input chosen. When that is chosen, watch what happens when I click above this D for a D minor chord. I'll play the D minor chord and Finale recognizes it. Let me use the space bar to get us to um, an A minor chord. I'm going to play an A minor chord right? and it recognizes A minor. Use the space bar, get us to the next one for a D minor chord. Right Now I will say this. Let me do that D minor chord one more time. If I played the D minor chord but had A as the lowest note, it's going to use that slash notation so it even recognizes that. Um, does it recognize other chords besides minors? Because that's you know all I've done so far. Well, what if I did, for instance, a D major chord with a minor 7, so a dominant 7, right? It recognizes that as a D7 chord and on and on. So in many instances, you can just play the chord in on your MIDI keyboard and have Finale recognize it. Okay, a couple more odds and ends about entering chords into a lead sheet. First, what if the chord symbols don't appear where you want them? Maybe they're too close to the staff or too far away from the staff. You can always use first the selection tool and just drag the chord symbol up or down. So for instance, if you wanted this one a little closer. Now, if you want to change the chords globally for the entire document, use the triangles that are to the left of the staff when you choose the chord tool. The first triangle will uh, affect all chords Notice that I've just raised every single chord in my lead sheet up, right? Or I can take every single chord down. So that will be some global change. And honestly, the first triangle is the one that I'd mostly stick with. Okay, the second triangle affects just this staff and the score. Since this lead sheet only has one staff, it also is going to work globally for every chord symbol. So really, the first two in a lead sheet work similar. The third one is just this staff in the system. So watch what I do here. I drag this up. Only the first staff goes up or only the first staff comes back down. And then the fourth triangle is the position for the next chord I'm going to enter. So for instance, if I was going to enter a chord here and I wanted that chord to be a little bit lower, I would drag it lower and then you know put my chord in and it'll go lower. I would stick with just the first triangle and you'll be in good shape. Another neat little trick that Finale's chord tool can do is it can allow you to show fretboards or the guitar symbols. So when I say show fretboards, voila, they all come on. Again, you may want to adjust the uh, placement um, because now that you have the fretboards, um, maybe the fretboards are too close like they are to this first ending here. So in this system here, it's possible that we would want to drag those fretboards you know, away from the first ending. Like that might be the better way to do it there and maybe there. Um, but you can also use the triangles, right, and adjust them more globally. So fretboards in Finale, really cool and very easy to apply. Just one more thing about entering chords in a lead sheet. By default, Finale will play back the chords in a rudimentary fashion. Enable chord playback is checked in the chord menu which means if you have a piano part which also is playing the chords, it might conflict or it might just be too much. So here's, for instance, a finale score playing both its own realization of the chords and it's also playing the piano part which has a realization of the chords. Right Now I can turn off that. I can go into the chord menu and, and turn off enable chord. And now I'm only going to hear the piano part. We don't have those high um, finale synth notes. So when you're creating a lead sheet or a rhythm chart like this where you actually have some of the chords realized, you might want to turn that off. Hopefully this was helpful. Now you can go add chords into your finale lead sheets.